Hi everyone, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have all of you. If you're new, welcome to our soul tribe over here. You guys are awesome. Just to remind you guys, and for those of you that are new, I'm a medium, so uh, if you hear me talking, channeling, rambling, whatever, I am talking. It sounds like I'm rambling, whatever the case may be. Uh, the point that I'm trying to get across is I'm a medium. My main ability is to channel. Um, it's an energetic takeover. Remember, I can't do what I do without your energy. That's what mediumship is, is that I was born with the ability to perceive energy in a different way i can connect to energy directly right and i they're guiding me to share this message we all have that ability the only thing that makes it a gift and i don't really like that word because i don't like words that like separate you into a you know a certain category i really don't it, it bothers me um it's the fact that i was born with that that was activated in me since i was a child so as an adult it's more intensified but every single one of you they're having me channel this mess this message for whatever reason there's there are no accidents uh for those of you that are new if you're not new you know the process but for those of you that are new um from the moment i hit record i am channeling okay well, it, it, even in the intros it sounds like an intro but it's not they're already sharing what they want to share they want you guys to know that everybody has that in them okay a lot of you may even have capabilities to the degree that i do okay and um if they're having me share that message it's for a reason but the thing is if you don't exercise that muscle if you don't learn to trust yourself how will you ever know that it's there okay if you are the kind of person that <clears throat> gets premonitions a lot of times you get feelings about something and it ends up happening. Whatever. There are lots of instances in your life in particular. If they're having me, they, it, this will all come together, okay? Because there is no channeling that I do on this channel, especially for those of you that are new. And they don't confirm. That's the beautiful part, guys. Because uh, it doesn't matter how long. I, the reason I channel the angelic realm in particular and, you know, my spirit team, my ancestors are around, etc., the reason they do what they do is because, and I emphasize it every reading, but for those of you that are new, we know that thoughts create our reality, right? That's how the devil energy, devil energy, you know, what the devil card signifies is our carnal mind. We don't have a brain, you know, when we go to the other side, we're just energy, we're bliss. Um, so that is how, that, that's what the devil energy is. It represents the fact that we have something that blocks us from that, from just being one with the universe, just being pu like pure energy. It's, it's our thoughts. But the funny thing is that our thoughts is the controller. It's the remote that controls the energy around you. The only thing is that we, our egos as human beings, this is a very deep message they're having me share. Ego is not a bad thing. The ego, we all have it, is doing exactly what it's meant to do. The ego exists to protect us, okay? From anything that we fear, okay? From anything that we feel can threaten our survival because we are primates, right? After all. Um, and th 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 we all... Okay, at the end of the day, everything that we do in our life, as complex as it seems, boils down to one thing and it's survival. Everything, the way you attract partners, the way you react to situations, the way you learn to react in childhood, right? You know, whatever gave you your patterns to behave the way you behave, it was all because we are wired to survive so whatever got you through whatever you experienced in your life that is what created your ego and who you are and one thing that we do share um is the fear of the unknown right is the fear I, this is deep that they're having me channel but they're having me channel this for a reason guys so s stick with me is the fear of the unknown is the fear of not knowing what happens when we cross, it, you know, or, or what's out there, what we can't see. But science does confirm that our eyes are limited. We can't even see 100% what's out there. Isn't that creepy when you think about it? But Google it, it's out there. So 
just because you don't see it does not mean it's not there. That's that moon card. If you're new, they have me spit out the names of cards, etc. Anything that they share, if I share a message, uh, an experience that I have had personally, cards, etc. It's for a reason. It's to spark a thought so I can share a message. However, that's what I was going back to before. It's funny. It, they're going so fast that I'm like hopping forward and back. It's It, it reflects the current energy that, that we're experiencing. And the astrological events have everything to do with it. Um, it's very, very intense energy. Everybody's feeling it. But basically, to tie this together, right? Our egos are doing what, what it's meant to do, right? The devil energy gets in your brain, right? to control your mind, right? To connect with your ego, their friends, right? Why? Because anything that has you overthinking or doubting, right? Anything that you fear, that is crucial to your survival as a human being, to your ego. Isn't that funny, right? Your brain has to process that something is causing you fear, even if it's subconscious, that moon card. We do know, or maybe we don't, I'll share it again. I've shared it many times on this channel, that our subconscious mind, meaning things you're not consciously aware of, dictates 95% of our actions. So you're actually only aware of 5% of your life and your thought process. But that devil energy is crucial to your survival, right? Your brain subconsciously has to perceive a threat to tell your ego that there's some kind of a fear or something that will, okay, threaten your survival. Apply this message how it may. They never have me share anything for no reason. When I click record, I feel the energy, but I never know what I'm going into. Never, never. I have no idea. It just comes out. All right. So apply this message to whatever area of your life. Okay. You need to apply it to, but I know if they had me share it, it's for a reason. So tying back to what I was saying, the reason they have me channel you guys is to confirm to you and to empower you to be the high priestess, to tap in to your intuition, to energy, to what's actually your truth. And they do it every reading. They have me spit out the names of cards, etc. A lot of times in the end, they'll come out. If they do so, it's to emphasize the message. But it's to confirm their presence. It's to confirm to you, how the hell could I do that? Every reading. Not validation. My ego's not here. I'm channeling. How the hell in every reading could I spit out the names of cards? And they always come out one way or another to, to be confirmed. So that's, so now they're having, there's a big message right now in pushing us to look at the bigger picture and the bigger picture in having them do that. Two things. Number one, thoughts create a reality. So they do that so that you feel confident in the messages I'm sharing because you can click off, not feel confident. And then your manifestation, what you actually are watching for it, the moment you have doubt, that's what you're going to create a doubtful experience. Your manifestation is not going to reach its full potential. Number two, they are now exposing to me that the reason that they do that, because remember, I can just pull cards and channel while I do so. I don't have to have do, you know, follow this system, but it's the system they had me followed and this is why. It's to prove to you, to humble you, to witness over and over again that energy dynamics exist, that energy exists. That's what you're seeing me do. That time does not exist. Past, present, future, all happens at the same time because it all boils down to the present. Every second of the day, what you're thinking creates the outcome. Otherwise, how could I channel the cards that are gonna come out before they come out? That energy is, look at the bigger picture. Everything that you think every day, you are causing an energetic reaction that gains momentum in front of you. It's like you, you're always pushing forward. Right? So what, what you're thinking about has already 
in the bigger picture, in the grand scheme of things, already created a momentum. Okay, I hope that you, I hope this makes sense because a lot of the times when I'm channeling, it doesn't make sense to me because it's just coming out of my mouth. So basically, your outcome already exists, but we are not to confuse that with like feeling like okay, destiny is destiny. What's written is written. That's where free will comes in. The future already exists, right? So let me just like go with the flow and. Just whatever. I'm not going to take any action. No, that's not how it works either. Because again, it's the present that matters. So yeah, there's a path that you're meant to follow. That will allow you to reach your fullest potential. But if you are not in the energy right now. Where you wholeheartedly believe in that future so freaking much. That you can manifest it in the present. That means you're never going to be in an energy of not, be, not being ready. You're never in an energy of thinking about all the things you don't have instead of what you have, you know, instead of what you know energetically you're meant to have, that you're going to have, which is what puts us in this nine of swords energy. Swords signify your mind, your intellect, your thoughts, right? And like I said, they're tying it all together. Hopefully this makes sense because I'm trying to channel the energy and it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a big energy to have to channel. If the devil energy exists in our brain and we need the devil energy to tap into our ego to protect us, which is a default, right? If we don't become conscious of that, which is that sun card. They just showed me that card for illumination, that star card for healing, temperance card, that balancing out between knowing that we are energy and energy exists and that trust in that and the fact that we're human and we can't change that. That's the temperance card. That's that balance, that six of pentacles. If we can't get ourselves to that energy, okay, we are allowing ourselves to resonate more with that devil energy, which is a nine of swords energy. Nine of swords in the regular right away shows somebody on the bed, hands to face, anxious, overthinking. Does that mean you're a negative person? Does that mean you're a devil or a demon? That's the next message that they're having me channel. Super important. And I know it's because we're having that super moon on the 28th in Libra, which is... <laughs> It's a lot of energy. We're making life-changing decisions right now. So that's why they're having me share this. I will go into the details on how this will manifest in your life and in relationships, etc. And little details, sure. But this is what they want you to know. So it goes back to uh, put this together. Does that mean you're a demon? demon? A devil? No. So that goes back into the other message. There's no such thing as negative or positive. There's dark forces and light forces. They just are. They're a part of us. They exist. It just so happens that the dark forces control us. They're in our mind. But it's part of the human experience. The sun card signifies the divine. The star card, the temperance. That's our truth. Can we balance that out? Temperance card. Justice card even. Even though that's more material. Are we going too much into our brain, our logic, systematic thinking, right? And what happens is because we have taught ourselves to associate dark energies, heavy experiences as devil energies, as bad and light energies as good, instead of just seeing it as it is, we trick ourselves, trick ourselves by thinking that by with our free will, we're cautiously taking steps towards something that we feel energetically. This is all tying together now. Because you're planning to do things. Because you're organizing things in a certain way and that's the right thing to do. And it's the wrong time for me to go towards this career change. It's, it just doesn't make sense for me to go after a relationship right now, etc., etc. Remember, every reading is an intuitive exercise. That's what they've been emphasizing, pushing you to empower you to trust. Not in how we've been taught, again, through our brain. Like public school, I used that example last reading. It's like teacher subordinate, watching a reading from the standpoint of 
hearing somebody that has a quote, quote, just like I said in the beginning, a gift that we all have. I just was born tapped into it, okay? Instead of looking at it reading this way, look at it as an intuitive exercise. Look at it as a way for you to tap into your ability to connect to energy and trusting that. If you see things around the table, a little white candle, etc., two white candles actually that I didn't like, but they told me something about that. I don't mention it, but it's there, all right? Or this heart with flames, whatever, this crystal, this burnt piece of Palo Santo that's actually freaking amazing. This beautiful Virgen de Guadalupe candle that I love here. I love, it just gives me so such good energy when I um light it. You're in power here. So I could be talking about your brother, your sister, your dog. You're in power here. It's the energy that I'm channeling. If you know it applies to yourself or it applies to your dog <laughs> or your cat instead of a relationship, you can do that. You're in power. Okay. So back to the message. So we have all of these ideas of life, but are we putting it together? We know thoughts create a reality. Are we integrating it? We know that overthinking Nine of Swords energy stops us from our blessing. We know that there's devil energy, toxicity, negative, negative thinking keeps us back, right? We know time doesn't exist. Everything just happens. We know destiny exists, that wheel of fortune. They're showing that to me again. That's a major arcana. It means it carries major energy. That's our karmic payout, our karmic lessons. That wheel is turning right now. You're about to receive a huge blessing. You're starting a new life now okay now right are we integrating these ideas which ties into the last reading it's focusing on incongruencies in your own life not just in other people in the last reading they had me focus on observe be the high priestess notice how somebody's actions doesn't match their words or how their words doesn't match their actions and now they're taking that information and amplifying it as a big picture as to how it relates to you, because everyone's a reflection of you, okay? This was very deep, I don't know, but it's important, because we're going through a life-changing moment, and they're going to give specifics. Excuse me. But that's the whole point, is that we trick ourselves. If they have you here, it's because they want that wheel of fortune to turn for you. You're supposed to, if you're here, you've been feeling that big energy, that's why you haven't clicked off. You want the little details, but you, you're feeling it. So you know you resonate. Okay? So if you're in that energy where you believe destiny exists, why are you holding yourself, yourself back? It's not time for this. I'm not, I don't have this, so I can't do that. That's not negative thinking. That makes sense. That's positive thinking. That's me being responsible. And that goes back to the message about negative and positive not existing. Because guess what? That's double energy. Anything that keeps you in your mind, that's where the devil exists. That's all that it means is devil energy. Whether you perceive it as positive or negative has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with your ego and your ego is there to protect you. That's your problem. So that's what the devil card is. It's being human. But the thing is, that's why they're showing me again. They're emphasizing the high priestess and the hierophant. Hierophant is higher knowledge, commitment to things, commitment to yourself, relationships too. They're showing me that. Relationships are forming. We'll get into it. The high priestess is your intuition. She just knows. That's what they're trying to empower you to tap into. You feel the energy? Do you trust the energy? Tap into the energy. If it's in relationship to a connection, do you feel a soul connection? Do you trust that it's a soul connection? Ask yourself why you're in the energy, why you're in these scenarios that you're in. Why are you attached to this particular career? Why are you, why do you have this relationship with this friend? Why do you have this romantic partner in your life so much? Where is the discomfort coming from? Is it discomfort coming from your mind, what you perceive as positive, but is actually holding you back? Or is the discomfort coming from, you know, the fact that these things in your life actually don't align with your path? Because anytime, anytime that there's an incongruency between where the energy is already in existence and where you are right now in your thoughts, you create resistance and discomfort, okay? 
So that's what they want you to focus on, High Priestess. It's the fact that you have the power to feel energy. Just meditate, do what you have to do, tap into it. Because when you're in that energy, you can trick yourself into thinking, I'm doing the right thing. But if you trust in destiny, if you trust in a soul connection, and if you trust that you made the right decision in career, you have nothing to think about. You already feel aligned to it. And if you trust that that, that exists, there's nowhere you need to be but right now embracing that. Otherwise, with free will, what you're doing is changing your own destiny. So if you feel soul connection to someone, or if you feel like you belong in this career, and you're thinking, you're thinking, and it's not, you know, I don't know, or I have to prepare this first before I go after this passion project or start my own business, whatever. That energy already exists. What you're actually doing is changing the manifestation. You're not preparing for shit. <laughs> okay. That's what they're saying. So unless you have, and that's what, again, this is not a religious channel, but do we realize that religion and everything is tied together? Wow, this is deep. This is what they wanted me to channel today, so that's what it is. It all ties down to the same thing. Whatever brainwashing exists, etc., that's that's on a whole nother conversation. But it all goes down to what? Every religion, faith, faith, have faith, have faith in God, have faith. God is just the energy. Have faith in this, have faith in that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's trusting that energy is there, not resisting it. When you're in that energy, you don't need to do anything to do anything. You already trust that it's yours. And you will know what aligns to your soul, depending on how it makes you feel. And I feel like right now what they're doing is they're showing you the incongruencies big time. They're showing you if the relationship you're in is the wrong relationship. They're showing you if the career you're in is the right or the wrong career, even though there's no right or wrong. Regardless, every situation you found yourself in leading you to this point was brought to you karmically, part of that wheel of fortune, so you can learn lessons and face yourself, face what I'm saying right now. That's the point. So don't put yourself, again, in the energy of regretting or oh, being with this person. Or, that same thing goes back to what I just said. Being in your thoughts, you're stopping your manifestation. This is what you need to focus on. Energy, because it's all that exists. You have discomfort. You have confusion. Where is your energy? Where do you feel like you're not in alignment? Ask yourself in every department, why am I here? What has this shown me? If you're getting a negative experience, why is it negative? Is it the is it the connection with this person or this thing that's not in alignment? Or is it our egos and our fear that's not in alignment? You gotta distinguish between the two. If it's career, if it's is it the fact that your soul is telling you that you're not aligned to be in this path and they're pushing you to be yourself and start your own business? Are they telling you that that's not in alignment? Or or is it that what's not in alignment is your your ego? Okay? And not wanting to let go of that job. Or your ego. You not yeah, pushing you to have fear of letting go of that job or your ego telling you that you're comfortable. Remember, ego is just to protect you from fear. You're comfortable in this position that you're at and you're afraid to move forward because you have a lack mentality and you, and, and you haunt yourself to just be here doing the same thing. Basically, I don't know if that made sense. Find out what's in alignment with your energy and where the incongruency is and separate the two and then go forward fearlessly. That's it. It sounds simple. It's not because we're human. But the universe of divine wants you to know it really is that simple. When you master this, when you can tell what's in alignment with you. When you can master tapping into that energy, high priestess, what's in alignment with you. There is no fear or things to think about. Truly. Truly. Even in the case of relationships, again, if they're having me specify this, it's for a reason. Your relationships have nothing to do with where you're at in life. What you have, what you don't have. All the blockages you have. 
You don't feel open to love. You feel like this is too difficult. This is too difficult. That's all your head, right? That's not what a relationship, that is not what creates something long lasting and that aligns with you. I know. Think if you are in that energy and you find yourself not being able to have a relationship for more than a year and a half, or you notice that all your relationships end in a particular way, or they don't pay, you notice, oh, it's interesting that all of my, for whatever reason, every relationship I have ends at like three years. I don't know why. They are having you focus on the incongruencies, meaning because you're doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. And the divine is making your ego show more than ever, not so that you can push things away, but so that you can be aware and all, apply it. And all, it might show up in relationship only, but they're doing it so you can apply it to every area of your life. So you can focus on the incongruencies. Okay. I hope that made sense because that was a lot. I don't even remember what I channeled, like half of it. Okay. But basically that's the message. Get out of your head <laughs> and um, learn to tap into what your soul says. There's no such thing as having to be ready, having to whatever. That's the whole point because it's what you focus on that determines your future. So if you're meant to have something big, that wheel is uh, uh, turning either way. They're saying it's crucial right now. Your energy right now is so crucial. It's ridiculously crucial because that's the way energy works because the universe is sucking it in so that you can, so they can spit it back out at you. You are setting the tone for the next six months and for the next 18 years and the next 35 years, according to astrology, which is just energetic cycles, same thing, okay? So if you're in the energy right now where you think you're making a positive adjustment in your life, right? I, I want to make a change. Things are not in alignment. I want to have a better relationship with my finances. I want to have better connections and whatever. That's the whole point of negative and positive. There's no such thing as positive or negative because everyone has a different perception of the world. So what you think is positive, what you think is negative is not the same as the person next to you. That's what holds you back, right? Right? So in that context, when you're in that energy, you think you're doing something right. You think you're preparing for the future, but the future already exists. But you're actually, the energy that you're actually giving to the universe is the energy of lack, that five of pentacles. You're focusing on what you don't have, not on what you can grow ex with excitement. And when you focus on what you don't have, that's what you are asking the universe to bring you. And that's in interesting. Let's use career as an example. Because what will happen is you will think you're working hard. I'm taking steps every day to better my finances, to better my uh, my relationship with my career, to better, to have a big, uh, a more balance in my life. And that's beautiful. But your steps will bring you nowhere if you're thinking about the fact that you're, you're taking steps. Because you don't have something. And you can't go forward fearlessly and just start that business without fear. Right? You can't just do it now. Because you have to take steps. You're focusing on the steps. You're just going to... The, the divine is just going to give you more stairs. So then it goes back. You Are you, do, are you really bettering your relationships? And this is vice versa. Because you're never in a relationship with someone by accident. If you find yourself in this dynamic with someone, it's because you guys mirror each other. Or again, karmically, soulmates, whatever you want to call them, are brought to your life. What the what soulmate literally means energy mate. Like you guys are connected. That's just how it works. That's what the soul is, your energy. It's what exists after you pass. That's what it is. Meaning they're brought into your life to amplify your energy because you share energy. So it might be people around your life that are literally, literally here just to expose the ego as much as they can. Arguments, explosions, whatever. Just to like, here's a mirror, here's a mirror, here's a mirror. Because your energy is shared. That's it. Right? So you can learn your lesson. But that's your choice. They're saying... 
So what's important is not taking the steps. What's important is trusting that it already exists. If you feel that your soul aligns with it, with your truth. But first you have to take time to find out what your truth is. You will be able, they're making it obvious now, you're going to know depending on what feels like it's out of alignment. So it's not focus on what's out of alignment and then get rid of it or I'm going to take steps or this. No, because that's still not in alignment with you. Because your truth is what you feel. And what you feel is your energy. And your energy, you feel it because it already exists. So the only way you're going to have alignment and balance in your life is when you trust that that is your truth, your inside. There's nothing in between you and your truth. Or you and a soul connection between somebody. Or you and your truth in relation to the fact that you were meant to do this particular career, okay? There's nothing in between. What, the illusion of what's in between is our ego. It's our fear of tapping into that because we don't see it, okay? So it's not about taking steps. It's about tapping into that, trusting it. And if it's in relation to a connection, let's say, it's not about being perfect, right? It's about understanding people's ego limitations, right? But the only way it could work, the only way it's meant to work, is when you're able to come together in the right now, in the present, fearlessly. Not with the idea of taking steps and focusing on your lack, but with the idea of we're connected by energy. I feel that. That's my truth. So therefore, I trust that we are and always will be on the same path. Because I trust that you're, I am accepting what's in alignment with me. I feel that. I trust that. So what that means is you're meant to go on this journey with me to evolve eternally. Because that's what we do. That's, what our, that's our purpose in life right now is just to evolve, to continue to grow. So it's not about you taking steps to feed your ego, which is your fear. <laughs> it's about... Connecting to what's in alignment with you, fearlessly, trusting, right? That there's an agreement, an alignment to continue to grow together. Because it already exists. You don't have your finances in order, you come together, then you make that happen. Because it already exists, right? This person's this way, this person's the other way. If you accept and trust that you guys are in alignment, then you accept and trust that you're there to help each other through these things. When you start blaming and arguing, you're tapping into your ego, your fear. And sometimes, let's say you're in a path of growing on your own, because you also have to grow with somebody and separately. If you're connected to somebody energetically, let's say you already are tapping out of your ego, but they are not, they're resisting that. You're going to find yourself random moments going back to the, your past energy that you're re re releasing. And it's going to be worse and worse. Why? Because you're in the energy of letting something go that doesn't serve you and they are not. So then you're mirroring something because you're meant to mirror, you know, each other. But energetically, you're not just mirroring what, what energy they're in. You're also adding frustration and anger to the fact that's even that energy is even coming back to you because you want to grow. Those are the incongruencies. And the thing about relationships is you could be meant to be with someone. But if they don't see that, if they don't see that and you, you cannot come into alignment and they will not have their abundance. And that was very powerful. And I think that they want me to post another reading after this one. It might be tonight. But for whatever reason, I never do this. They wanted this to be more of a channeled message. Maybe they want you to sit on this before I start pulling the details. Because there's a lot of detail in relation to your life and what's going to happen. But it's so much that they want me to spend a certain amount of time that I don't have right now. And there's a reason for everything. I'm channeling. So maybe they wanted you to sit on this. I'm going to confirm some things though. Excuse me. So with this supermoon in Libra, which is Venus, Venus ties to your finances, love, what's in alignment with you? 
And we're in the energy of Aries, which is the first sign of the zodiac. So whenever we're entering Aries, according to astrology, which is all about energy, it's the start of the new year astrological here right now so it's the this is the point right now of a new beginning especially with that super moon so with that venus energy that's what it is and that aries influence it's amplifying what's in alignment with our true energy because venus is all about love and comfort and beauty and that's really what our that's really all that our energy is. Our truth is what brings you love. Not what brings you resistance. And Aries is here to say leap, full card. Or stay behind. So really take a moment, four of swords, hermit. If you're not talking to someone that's on purpose, if you're confused right now, that's on purpose. And if they let you hear, that's on purpose too. Because they wanted you to hear this while you're in that energy. To do what you need to do, especially this week, eight of wands, ace of swords. Communicate, co conversations are going to be had. Communicate fearlessly. Go after what you want. But really sit down and get to know your ego. And get to know... When you meditate on your ego and you keep dissecting what's left, whatever's left is what you truly feel connected with. That means it already exists. That means that you're supposed to trust it so that will can turn because there is no negative when you align there. That was, that was a lot. So I think I'm going to pull another reading. I'm going to do another reading, but this is what they wanted me to say. Ooh, what's this? The world. <laughs> the world, you guys. Major Arcana. And the world is a freaking number 21 card. Do you know what the world is? And I channeled this and just split it. You guys know that that's, that's what happens. Followed by the freaking chariot and the four of wands and the ace of swords and the freaking star that I channeled. Hold on, I'm gonna pull two more. So I wanna, oh sorry, because I wanna make this one quicker. Because I am, I, I wanna focus on the details later. Seven of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, like I channeled. Oh, and look who's at the bottom. With the freaking Five of Pentacles that I channeled, the Wheel of Fortune. You can't make it up because they know. They wanted me to just focus on this because they know if I start pulling cards, I'm gonna start going into detail, detail, detail. But they just wanted to confirm you know so that you can have that trust before i post another reading here's that wheel of fortune as channel okay this is what's happening this is karma there's a big blessing completion that you're being pushed to right now do you notice if you're not new to my channel the readings by the way all the readings on my channel are timeless if you're still here so even if you see a reading from like freaking queen of cups which is being in like the energy of love even if you see a reading from two years ago if you're drawn to it that's what energy is okay you got to trust that you're not guided for um no reason that wheel of fortune was coming up in the beginning every reading do you notice yesterday not yesterday my last reading in this one it came out in the end meaning this energy already passed we're already here that wheel is already turning so it's already turned to a certain degree number 10 means completion are you going to allow it to turn all the way quickly eight of wands four of wands in the regular four of wands signifies balance but the four of wands is marriage commitment love it it's the only card that like specifically like the ten of cups ten of pentacles is a union a marriage etc even like finances but the four of wands is specifically a family card okay so it's um connections it's the card that signifies marriage relationships and your actual family your connection to your family uh the bigger picture creating a family quickly okay but again th this is all like are you going to allow this wheel to turn because with the eight of wands the eight of wands means rapid 
communication and movement forward, like right now. And in this deck, it's interesting. The Eight of Wands literally looks like the Tower card. The Tower is sudden upheaval, sudden events. The ending of an old foundation so a new one can begin. So that's what they're emphasizing. It's the ending of that thought pattern, that devil, literally, as we were talking about it. And you saw how it came out like by itself and the cards underneath that I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. That devil energy, whatever conflict that you're feeling right now, that was divinely guided. So if you had some kind of issue with people, any issue that you have with people around you right now, that was, it was meant to happen for a certain reason. Now, your job is to bring justice. I, I channel these two together, which is healing, trusting in the divine that this was brought to bring balance, justice into your life. But I said, as I channeled, justice is more like on the material plane. And they're interesting. There is a uh, woman here with a scale and we are having, what did I say? A supermoon in Libra on the 28th. Justice card signifies Libra balance. Okay, she, this card, she's holding a sword, the sword of truth, that lion, like that strength card, right? The strength card can mean two things, even though it's not here, it's reminding me of that. It can mean pride, your ego, or it could be strength, that sword clarity. So it's your job. And there's that sun, that clarity. Are you going to let that sun shine? The stars behind there, the star card, bring that faith, that healing. And instead of being an ego, you see that lion has three sets of eyes being clear on your future and bring with balance, okay? Or are you going to stay here? And that's what I'm saying. Whatever issues you've had right now with people, they want you to trust. Get out of, don't go into that Nanosaurus energy right now, please. They brought you here just to make sure that you understand this. The devil came out this week quickly, Okay. That's why these, this Eight of Wands, I said it's quick communication. It could be impulsive. It's quick movement forward. It looks like the Tower card. The Tower card is literally destruction. The, the, um, it's not negative, though. No positive or negative. It's the ending of an old foundation to create a new one. So something happened suddenly in regards to family, in regards to love, in regards to your perception of what you want to create in the future with the Chariot card, which literally is the Cancer card. And I always specify cancer is, cancer signifies home, family, comfort. Next to the four of wands, that's amplified. The world card is closing out cycles. It's meant to close out right now, number 21. So you can bring justice to your life with clarity, not pride, not your ego, okay? That's what, whatever happened right now, the devil energy came out, toxicity in both you and your person. The only job that you have right now, your job on the material plane is you bring, you have to Put, it's your free will. Bring justice to this. Are you going to focus on, trust? find out what you're in, aligned to or are you going to focus on this? Your only job right now, whatever destruction, whatever chaos happened this week happened so that you can yourself focus and decide what's love, queen of cups, and what's ego and devil energy. What's holding you back? The seven of pentacles is reaping what you sowed. It's looking at, you know, the past so that you can decide how you're going to move forward and even though these are two suits you guys the seven to the eight is still a progression especially with the wheel of fortune we started with the ace of swords the ace of swords is clarity truth also communication so you're going to learn something you're going to speak to somebody but this communication is going to bring healing it's meant to bring healing it's meant to get you out of this seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is the card in the right away where he's standing, looking at that bush with seven pentacles, like just analyzing, looking at the past, looking at where he's been or she, you know, what's happened so that they can. That's exactly the emphasis. Like I said, making a plan. What am I going to plan? What am I missing? But you know what's beautiful? Okay, look at the freaking seven of pentacles. The image here, it's totally different, you guys. The image here, okay, has a sun clarity and he's not looking back at the seven of pentacles analyzing he's like i'm taking these seven pentacles and i'm moving forward boom i'm, I'm taking it looks like the full card even i love that this deck the tarot del fuego the artist uh ricardo cavolo beautiful because he just like somehow combines all of the cards it looks like the full card what does that mean the full card he's even dressed like the full card like you know Taking a leap of faith, not being afraid of what's below. So instead of focusing on what do I need to do, what steps do I need to take, he's like, I'm just going to go for it. Boom, I'm going to trust. 
and I'm going to move forward quickly. Okay, destroy this foundation. And with the devil card, the devil card, that's what I'm saying. There is love at your doorstep. There's literally a heart here leading up to that door, but that door is closed. So somebody has a closed heart here, but this doesn't just apply to love. This applies to love. And again, your truth, what aligns you to love energy, what you want to do with faith. Okay. Right. But you see how this looks like the tower card. So there was setting up people, but it's also the ability to recognize between what's truly positive, what's truly negative and understanding that there is no such thing. Because even though this looks like some, whatever happened looks like it was like, oh my God, terrible. Like this, this castle is being destroyed. Okay. Even though it looks negative, that's your thought. It's actually brought to you so that you can walk out the door towards love and what's in alignment with you. You can look at it two ways. It's not leading up to the door that's closed because this castle is on fire. It's being destroyed by the divine, by that dark force. You see, there's like this white underneath it, like trying to get that dark force out. It's like whether you like it or not. You see this? I love this. These eight wands here. It's four four wands here, four wands there, which is the four of wands. And that's underneath it. <laughs> which means, again, family, love, partnerships. But it's combined with like it's wrapped around. Which reminds me in the traditional tarot, the eight of swords. Which is a self-imposed imprisonment of your own thoughts. You kept yourself bound to your past. So they lit that on fire. When something's on fire, you have no choice but to walk out the door, close the door so the fire does not spread. And when you do that fearlessly, you will be led to love and the wheel will turn, which is your blessing. But that only happens, again, it's a beautiful image. If instead of focusing on what you don't have and how you can't do this, you take a leap of faith forward, trusting that even though something looks like, oh my God, something's being destroyed. I have like, no, because when something's destroyed, you don't know what's in front of you. It's you, you get fear. That's what the devil energy does. That's what your ego's meant to do that. Why? Uh, because what's in front of you is new. Anything that's new, anything that's unknown, it ties back to the message I had in the beginning, makes you think you don't deserve it or you can't have it or it's not true. That's the devil energy. You see here, beautiful card. This devil energy has a sword on his arm holding this person. The sword, which is the ace of swords. That's your false truth. This is your real truth. Look at this. Holding, bleeding this sword that's on fire. Now, even though this was on fire, I'm holding on to the truth that this was supposed to be on fire. So I can climb these mountains and go towards the stars behind here, the sun, my clarity, and with faith. My eyes are wide open. Okay? This is what happens. Look at this. This is what happens when you are when you allow the devil energy into your life. And you can't make it up because even the pictures align, you guys. You see, this devil is red with all those sets of eyes. These like demon looking things with all these sets of eyes. There is a woman here. Okay, it could be masculine. It doesn't matter. It's the image. They have me focus on things differently every time. There she is looking all high and mighty. There's demons all over about to swallow her. And she doesn't even know. Because she, her, her, cause she's blindfolded. And she's holding this huge sword, which is this one. But she's not bleeding. But because she's holding this sword, which is your mind, your thought, your intellect, and she's not bleeding, but and she's strong enough to hold it up high. She thinks she has a crown. She thinks she's healing. She thinks she's doing the right thing. She thinks her eye is wide open. But no, no, no. But she's blindfolded, and that crown's not really on her head. You're, what you're holding on to is devil energy is safety. And you don't realize when that happens, you don't allow your old foundation to just, to uh, crumble so that you can get what you want. You're actually going to be burned alive and swallowed by these demons. So it doesn't matter if there's stars around here. I don't care how strong you are. You're going to burn. And that crown is not even there. So it's a false sense of security. Five of Pentacles, as I channeled, is the energy of lack. Literally. See? Oh my God, look. The eye here, same eye. It's like you think you have clarity. Now you're seeing the truth. There's the uh, horn of the devil. This home here is upside down on fire, which is this. 
and you're crying. Look at the tears. Pentacles. Of all the things that you've lost. This is the card of loss. Also money. Pentacles is things on the material plane. Career. You know, thinking like, I can't believe I made the wrong decision. That's what the devil does. I can't believe that I'm not in the right place financially to have this love, have this life. That's what the devil does. Makes you think. See that sword right there that he has? That's the sword she's holding. I can't believe I'm crying. Somebody's in pain. So if somebody's family or home is upside down for whatever reason. Finances, whatever. Okay? Doesn't matter upside down on fire because you're not realizing that it's being burnt and destroyed so that you can have your blessing look at that beautiful four of wands like i said which is home family there's fire here too honey but there's freaking literally flowers blooming out of the fire unbelievable and you see those like white things it almost looks like it goes together like there's this skull here which is the, like the death card which is the death card signifies death and regeneration. Something has to die so that you can regenerate. And those pieces of the bone literally shoot upwards into the four of wands. So you think that there was an ending or something negative. You're crying over it. You think it's gone. You think you don't have it. There's an energy of lack, but you don't realize that that's burning. So you can have, this can blossom. So it's your choice what you're going to do with it. With that energy. Are you going to focus on your home and all these things being upside down and what you've lost? Or are you just going to throw it up in the air and take a leap of faith? Because if what the point is, you're not supposed to focus what's on your mind. You're not supposed to focus on what you see because what you see is upside down. It, it's not the truth. There's no sun here. It's devil horns, devil horns. It's not the truth. He's tricking you into only seeing that, you see. That's not the truth. That's not what's there. What's actually in front of you is all the karmic lessons that guided you to be exactly here so you can hop on that chariot and move forward without fear and create this home or whatever with somebody. Not, not, not focusing on what you didn't have and focus on the queen of cups energy queen of cups energy is, is love see that same flower blooming love bloom blooms and you can apply this to every area of your life when you're naked she's naked she's pregnant with a new beginning because love is coming out of her despite the fire coming through her hair and that's the energy that i said it's not about being in a perfect place with in your life or not having the finances to start your business. Or being afraid that you can't take care of your children because you can't quit your job, whatever. I was, I've been there. Okay? Or you don't have what it takes. It's not about that. That's not the truth. It's about coming together with someone or with something while you're still burning but knowing the true eye over here on top of your heart okay is the fact that as you know that as long as there's love coming out of you and it's in alignment with the love inside of you everything blooms no matter what this cycle is meant to close so if you're feeling it that's what you're meant to do and um it's beautiful because you see here, she's blindfolded, that queen of swords with the blindfold and that sword holding it up high, thinking she, you're being victorious, male or female. There's no blood on it. It's all clean, okay? Because the devil makes you think you're, you're doing the right thing. That's BS. Look at this sword. Ace of Swords is a brand new beginning uh, in alignment with truth, with actual stars, especially next to the star card. Oh, I got the chills. And the love, queen of cups, and the world, and the justice, and the chain. All that. Are you kidding me? You see how this came out separate? That's the truth. It's not this sword. It's the sword that's bloody. That's the beginning of your truth. What that is, that's a feminine energy hand and that's a masculine's hand. You're both holding that sword while there's flames, you're, while you're bleeding. You're, you're allowing yourselves to bleed together, knowing that you're in alignment, star card, with your truth. So as long as you do that, and you are not afraid to bleed. You can move those mountains. You can, the sun, you see these mountains? The sun can peek out, which is what will bring you your abundance. You're meant to have something beautiful, but it's a two-way street. That's why there's a chariot. 
So if this is in relation to love and someone's not hopping on the wheel with you, you need to move forward anyway. This is not the time to stop. Okay? Because that's what the devil does. If you don't get yourself into alignment, if you don't put yourself in this energy, if you stick to somebody that's that refuses to put themselves in this, this energy and you're energetically connected, what's going to happen is you're just going to amplify this energy. For you and for them, no one's going to move forward. Wow. They still want me to post another reading. Yeah, look. Seven of Cups is the card of confusion, illusions, illusion, like not being clear. And in regards to love, I channeled this card that this way last time. In the traditional tarot, all these cups have different things. So it's like someone thinking there's like a million things they need to take care of. I don't know. I don't know. I can't do anything that I want. And there's someone's like crying, literally. Because oh my, my finances aren't right. I can't have this. I can't have that. But they're focusing on the wrong thing. That's the devil. Right? That's what the seven of cups looks like in the regular right away. But here, there's apples with eyes. And I channeled the card. Even though something, you see these roots are burning. Even though this foundation is burning, it's meant to burn. Somebody's the apple of your eye. That's that's the only thing that's going to stay there. That's why they have leaves on them. Okay. <gasps> and they confirmed it by me splitting it out of nowhere and ending. Oh, the chills, dude. Oh, my God. The temperance card. You see all these major arcana? Major arcana are not everyday things. They're major life lessons. That's why this energy is huge. Temperance. What's that? This card, temperance, has a rainbow. The sun right this person has no face the only thing they have on their face is the stars from the star card which is what faith everything i said in the beginning confirming having faith you see one of these cups uh cornucopias whatever you call them with water and the other one with fire what happens you throw in the water the divine's hand is pushing the water into this little thing so then it could be thrown into the fire what does that mean? As long as you you don't keep yourself in this energy where with your eye, you're focusing on lack, you only focus on trusting that this is where you belong or whatever, even if you don't see it right now, you allow the divine, the temperance is the card of the angels to keep pouring water, to keep putting out whatever fire gets in your way. And that's that's true balance. That's true balance. What's this? Yeah. Nine of Wands is moving forward with, like, literally, like, moving forward no matter what. This is burning and he's still going up the ladder. Right? Five of Swords is deception, sneakiness. This is self-deception. Look at that dark force with a million eyes. And it's a number five. Number five signifies change. But that's why it's significant, because the change has to come from the, literally, your thoughts. It's in your mind. And that's what's keeping you in the dark and making you cry. And you're supposed to move forward no matter what. Wow. They can, the, this was beautiful. Yup. Eight of Pentacles means working. Beautiful. This is how they're going to end. This is beautiful. Working, working. Look at all those skulls. Eight of Pentacles is beautiful. It literally means the workplace. So this is absolutely in regards to career and love both, okay? It means working together with someone towards something or yourself, like diligently, dil dil diligently, despite there being fire on this house, whatever, it doesn't matter. But there's, th look at all these skulls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine skulls. They've been emphasizing the number nines of every reading. And I don't know why I decided to count that, which is interesting because there's eight. Eight of Pentacles. Hold on. Did I make a mistake? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, there's nine. <laughs> okay. So there's eight Pentacles. You working towards the nine, the next step, without fear of dying. Number one, number two. They've been emphasizing the number nine, so that's interesting. Um, this is in relation to something you've been going through the past nine weeks, nine days, nine months, nine years, in particular, even nineteen years. With the ace, which is number one. Or all of the above. 
They've been emphasizing that multiple times. There's no reason for there to be nine schools there in particular. So that's just, they wanted me to emphasize that. But again, the schools mean, what does it mean? It means death and transformation, death and transformation. It's the growth process. It's not focusing on the fact that you're dying. It's focusing on the fact that you're elevating and you will be doing that going up the mountain your entire life. And that is the only way you can build something of value with someone in your career, both fearlessly. Wow, this was beautiful. Um, I'm just going to pull one from here. I might post another reading possibly tomorrow, though. I, we'll see. Oh my God, you can't make it up. Literally, this just, wow. Look at this person. There's a bed. The Nine of Swords did not come out yet, but there's a bed here with somebody sleeping, like upset. Nine of Thoughts, which is the Nine of, oh, I forgot. I said the Nine of Swords did not come out. The Nine of Thought in this deck is the Nine of Swords. <laughs> and I just picked this up. You can't make it up. They confirm everything. <laughs> Freaking devil try to make me not say it. No lie. <laughs> Stop being so hard on yourself and turn your thoughts toward the positive. There's no need to worry. Anticipating the worst isn't helpful. Know that heaven will provide a solution. If you're experiencing sleepless nights or anxiety over a challenge in your life, release the problem to the angels. Guys, they are here. You can't make it up ever, ever. That's, that is what, and that is why they guide you here because it's about you trusting what's in the inside because if you can see me trust myself enough to call all these cards have them come out have them confirm like this have me preconceive the energy before it comes out that's not a message to prove myself it's a message for you that energy exists already that's the message for you so that you whoever you are can see this happen be like no lie and tap into that yourself so that you can let go of this. It holds you back. A lot. So you can manifest your dreams. You're ready to go. There is no need for additional preparation. You can't make it up. There's no need for additional preparation. Take the first steps towards the changes you desire. Even if they're small steps. Notice signs that guide you in the right direction, as well as resources and support that miraculous, miraculously appear. I told you, miraculously, because that's what happens when you are in that energy. Things miraculously appear. One more, they said. Oh, okay, and then that's it. What is this? messenger of action oh you my god you can't make it up i said they wanted me to light these two candles i'm gonna do it before i go two white candles there's a woman here lighting a, like literally it's not lit she is lighting a white candle they just reminded me because i said it in the beginning and i didn't do it that's crazy you can't make it up <laughs> and it's the messenger of action they're like didn't i tell you to freaking light a white candle you guys should do it too the, everything it's an energy exchange <laughs> You can't make that. I love them, man. But it's a message of action. Something new and excited relating to, related to creativity or your career comes to your attention. You feel an eagerness to learn and you're ready to get going, although you may feel insecure. Do it anyway. This card represents someone in your life or maybe you who is creative, enthusiastic, and fascinated by life and who wants to try everything. The message is clear. I told you it's not just about love. It's also about career. They want me to like this. I think this is white white candles are to clear the energy they had me pick two in particular so maybe it's for you and somebody else that you love that's in your life because that's not an accident quite literally you freaking saw that come out right that you can't you cannot they actually want one more oh oh six of action wow <sighs> action 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 wow what a wonderful experience for you. Your project is a total success, bringing awards, promotions, or other recognition for your efforts. Well done. If someone who can help you offers assistance, know that this person is heaven sent and say yes. Holy shit. That's in your personal life, but also quite literally with me. I'm connecting to heaven, meaning energy. They sent me here to offer you assistance so that you know that you're meant to have the success 
but it's for your efforts. But you had a mistake with your nine of swords in regards to what your efforts actually were meant to be. The devil was trying to trick you. You are very special. Love and light. Actually, hold on. And I gotta go. Wait, hold on, that's fine. I still have a couple of minutes. Let me shuffle like normal. I heard this message in my head and I channeled it. Remember I said it's like the blame for ego, pot calling the kettle black, number three, three, Google angel number three, three, also seven, 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 if that's significant for you because we got three sevens and eight, eight, pot calling the kettle black, hypocrisy, projection, similarity, blame, introspection needed. I say, guys, it's, there's a mirroring energy. But again, it, it's, it's you also being in the energy of understanding that if somebody, guys, refuses to get out of this energy and you're connected, both in career, in relationships, friends, doesn't matter. Your whole life, everything mirrors is, is a representation of each other, right? It all goes together. Um, if you allow yourself to force yourself to be in this energy when someone refuses to grow... You got to move forward anyway. But there's a big message in relation to this is every area of your life. This is not, this is not, like I said, this is not small time energy. This is big time energy. And one thing leads to another. And it says take a small step. But look at this huge energy. Okay. And here it says total success. What does that mean? You think everything's a domino effect. So you think that. The steps you can take right now could only be little, but that's the whole point. It's only taking that one step that will make a difference in your life. That's all you need. It's like that one domino that you, you know, push. Then all of them just happen to fall into place. And everything will die as a process. With your connection with everything, career, your life, everything, relationship, fearlessly. That's, and you grow, you go uphill growing, trusting. That's the point. 